Welcome to Discovering. Ice fishing season is well underway here in the UP. We hit up a couple of small lakes in search of pulling some trout out of the ice. The brook trout especially, they kind of just cruise around the edges and looking for food. And Brian is back with a lake trout recipe you don't want to miss. So sit back and relax. It's Monday night and it's time for Upper Michigan's very own Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure, the only way I measure. Feelings that I have for this fine land, there is so much to discover when you're a long-time lover of northern Michigan. When you think of trout fishing, you normally, well, at least for me, picture a fly fisherman or woman on a backwoods stream in the early spring or fall. Sitting on a small frozen pond, jigging for brookies does not come to mind, but it's another way to enjoy the sport of trout fishing. There are some inland lakes and ponds in the UP open to trout fishing year round. Today, we're fishing for brookies in one of those tiny ponds. So there's still a boat three inches of clear solid ice and then there's about an inch and a half of like the white ice on top which isn't as strong but three inches is um pretty solid especially if it's you know you don't have a, a big shack that you're setting up and a bunch of people all standing in one spot and the nice thing too is we're just gonna be fishing right along the shore here so Probably not walking out in the middle. Looks like there's an open spot out there. But that's the nice thing with the, the brook trout especially, they kind of just cruise around the edges and looking for food. And so you can kind of just go all the way up and down the shoreline and sort of wait for them to come to you. So I'll drill a few more holes. Um, the first one I'm going to do is actually this thing, which is a, it's a glorified rod holder. It's called a jaw jacker, and there's different companies that make different variations. But it's essentially a rod holder that sets the hook for you. And I just have this little, this is a, uh, just a little light action ugly stick with a little, I think that's called Wonder Bread tungsten jig. Those uh, chartreuse spots glow in the dark which it's kind of sunny, bright out right now, but just adds a little bit of extra color. Really tiny, it's like a size 16 hook, I think. So these guys, these are mayfly nymphs, wigglers. People like them for perch and panfish, but they work really well for trout as well. I fished this spot last week. This is about five or six feet deep here, but these trout, they kind of just hang out right under the ice. Um, I've had times where it literally right below the edge of the hole you drilled. Don't need a super heavy duty line for these brook trout. There are some lakes where the DNR actually stocks um, retired broodstock fish from the hatchery, which can be quite big. Um, this is not one of those lakes. They stock them here as, um, I think, yearlings. So they're about an average size of about eight inches. Um, when they put them in here. So this thing, we'll let it sit here and if a fish hits it, it should see the rod tip bounce up and then start kind of moving down. And then we know there's a fish on. But it makes sure that that hook gets set nicely. It also, it, it hooks them kind of right in the corner of the mouth. One, one thing with brook trout especially, sometimes you, you can get them hooked really deep and it's hard to get that hook out. This makes a cleaner hook set, I think. 
As soon as Steve turned his back, the rod sprang up. Nothing there. Must have, must have been a must have been a curious fish, but well, the wiggler is still there. So that's the other part of these kind ponds, though, is you can fish, but there's so much cool wildlife and um, plant life. Um, this particular pond we're on, it's a it's a bog surrounding it. So there's like this floating mat of peat moss. Even on the days you don't catch a fish, it's, it's fun to take that other stuff in and just kind of um, experience the, the world around you a little bit more. Finding ponds and lakes like this can be a little tricky just because there's not that many of them that the DNR actually stocks. The ones they do stock, um, there's even fewer that are open year-round for ice fishing. Most, most trout lakes and, and streams um, close to kind of coincide with the spawning season. But there's a few of these ponds that stay open all winter, and a few bigger lakes as well. The DNR has, well they have a fish stocking database. So not only for trout, but for whatever species you're interested in, you can um, you can search by county and pick a lake. It'll show you a record of every every fish they've stocked in the lake since, I think it goes back to 1979. So it goes back a little ways. But to find these little trout lakes and ponds, they have a list of what they call designated trout lakes. And there's kind of a, there's a map that shows you um, the basic area. And uh, for the ones that are hard to find, you can you can just email you can find contact information for some of the fisheries biologists mm -hmm. um, in that area. And uh, they're pretty good about sharing that information and helping people find these. Brook trout are such cool fish though. They, uh, they're the state fish, of course, of Michigan and really need clean, um, well oxygenated water. People often say they don't, they don't live in ugly places and sometimes you do have to go a little bit off the beaten path to find them. But even in these lakes that are, that are stocked, there's no natural reproduction. It still is, it still is really special when you, uh, when you get to see these fish in an environment like this. I recently met this avid trout fisherman when he interviewed me for his new Saturday Sound and Night podcast. I feel like I have a lot of different outdoor hobbies, kind of a jack of all trades, master of none sort of thing. And, um, I was looking for kind of a creative way to put it all together. And the other part of it was a lot of the times I find myself coming out on the weekends to do these things. I like fishing and biking and hunting and, um, kayaking and all these different things. And a lot of times I, you know, time's precious and I get out and I do it on the weekend and then I kind of forget about it and, um, daydream about going back out during the week. And so I wanted a way to put it together a little bit more and kind of get into the, um, like why, why do we do these kind hobbies and stuff? And in the UP, we're so fortunate to have so many areas and waterways and land and trails and things and campgrounds. So I started a podcast and, um, a number of episodes have just been myself or me and my brother talking about our, our outdoor adventures and just processing them, I guess. And been trying to uh, get a few interviews too with different UP based folks who whose work I find interesting and um, who kind of convey that that spirit of adventure and you know why we get outside and do these things so yeah we're gonna keep trying to trying to keep that going it's been fun um, post mostly on YouTube and then also clips I'll post on we have an Instagram and a, a TikTok. <laughs> um, for social media, but Saturday Sound and Night podcast. There it is. It's playing with it. <laughs> There's a couple of them there. This is a little one. Come on. Oh, oh. <laughs> They're swiping at it. Try to keep it on the move, keep them interested. Come on. <laughs> oh, he's still there. They're swiping at it. The thing about brook trout is even though they're, oh, even though they're smaller, you know, they're not the biggest fish, they, uh, they're aggressive for their size. And that's, I love them. 
there's so much there's so much fun to catch we tried for hours but no luck hooking any brookies steve said looking down the hole they looked like they were pretty small I wanted to put my GoPro down the hole too to see the brookies, but I didn't want to ruin our chances of catching one by spooking them off. The only thing with sight fishing like this is if you see them, they they probably saw you. And As the sun went down, our hopes of hooking a brook trout were still pretty high, and every time we thought about packing it up, those little brookies kept taunting us. The wiggler's so, oh, oh, it just slashed at it. I watched it. It missed it though. It's like biting it, but it's not getting hooked. <laughs> That's fishing for you when you were wa literally watching them and they're, uh, oh, and I can't, you know, usually when that happens, they say downsize your hook. Well, I can't, this is about as small as a hook as you can get. So yeah, the things we do to try to catch fish and all right, the hardest part of the day, <laughs> figuring out when to call it quits. That's the thing that keeps you coming back, I guess, is uh, when you come out and you know there's fish, but you come this close to catching them and you don't. <laughs> I met up with Steve and his brother on another day, this time for bigger trout on a bigger pond. There are some lake trout in here though, so that's always a possibility. But I think they're only like retired brood stock. Mm -hmm. I think we're in the bottom half of that 22 feet, so we'll try it. Day two started off looking like day one. The jaw jacker would go off, but no fish on the other end. Just pulling for a minute. Again, that could have been one of those little bluegill or something, who knows. Nope, <laughs> I did for a second. I'll jig this hole maybe for a minute. They're liking that wax worm and white jig. I might have to change up. Whatever, this is taking some wine. And it's gone. It took a lot of wine for... I didn't even have this set hardly, and it uh, it hit. I lose plenty of these right at the hole, so hopefully, hopefully that doesn't happen here. When they don't want to get their head in the right direction, hey. There we go. That's what a fish looks like. <laughs> There's a splake, half brook trout, half lake trout, all muscle. Now, on this lake, I don't know if he would be legal size. They have to be 15 inches to keep. So we'll put a tape on him quick just to see. Yeah, he's about 14 inches. Get him back in the water. All right, well, maybe we need to be uh, shallower here. And also might be something about this drop off. I, I had set this. And I felt it tug. I'm like, wait a second. And then I set it. Two seconds later, there it goes. Wonder Bread jig, because it looks like the old Wonder Bread bag with the colorful spots. And a wax worm. Classic combo. A dozen new holes later, and finally another bite. On the same hole that Jaw Jacker was on. When I first started ice fishing trout, I always had my drag set way too tight. And I, just like a pike or something, you gotta let them run when they want to run. He's running. He's running all right. This might be another splake because I saw its head briefly. It looked like it was just under the ice. This might be a legal one. Yeah, so they have a little bit more of a pronounced fork in the tail there. Still got the nice bright orange fins. Like a brook trout. 
They grow faster than a brook trout. They're a little more hardy. They raise these right in Marquette at the state fish hatchery. They do put them in inland lakes, but they also are in Lake Superior, um, Lake Michigan. Copper Harbor is a really popular spot to, to fish for splake. And that's all she wrote. I'll have to add fishing for splake elsewhere in the UP to my list. And if you're on YouTube, check out Steve's podcast, Saturday Sauna Night. Hey, we're cooking wild. Today we're making maple bourbon lake trout, fresh from Lake Superior and smoked potatoes. Let's get rolling. We'll start out with some fresh fillets straight from Lake Superior. Hard to beat. We're gonna use cooking wild maple breakfast sausage seasoning as a rub. Works on all kinds of stuff. The potatoes are going in a smoker. Can't say I've tried that before, but experimenting is what keeps it interesting. Matter of fact, I guess I like to experiment a lot more than I like to cook. A little Cajun seasoning on the potatoes. Sometimes you want to pull out the small Y bones, but actually these fillets are small enough, I really didn't bother. Wrap them up and into the fridge till it's time for the pan. For me, when it comes to lake trout or salmon, I like it a bit sweet. The maple rub will sweeten it up, but I like a little bit more. So we're going to whip up some variation of a bourbon sauce to top it off. Bourbon, of course. Brown sugar. Some molasses. Worcestershire sauce. A little bit of cumin. Add a little zinc to it with something balsamic. Gotta have pepper. Cook that down till it gets somewhat thick and you're ready to go. Made with pure UP maple sugar. I've used this as a rub on pork butts, ribs, fish, and of course it makes great maple breakfast sausage. Now let's top it off with some candied walnuts. Toast them up in the oven for a bit. Heat up some butter and brown sugar. Toss in the walnuts, spread them out to set up and you're done. Bust them up and put them on about anything. Today they're going on fish. So there you have it. Pan fried maple glazed lake trout topped with balsamic bourbon sauce and candied walnuts. Oh, and the experimental smoked potatoes were delicious. Since we're on the topic of fish, next week on Discovering, we visit the fish shop to see what the DNR fisheries technicians are up to in the winter months when they aren't out stocking lakes or doing surveys. And learn how they age the fish using the samples they collect during the year. What I do is I take the spine and I'll actually cut a disc off of it. And then what I'll do with the spine here is I'll actually look at it under a microscope here. And what we're doing is I'm counting annuli.
That's all for tonight, and I hope to see you right back here next week for Upper Michigan's very own Discovering.